there we go. So we're live. I'm doing a TNA review, and I'm not alone. Again, I have some guests with me. So do you guys want to like introduce yourselves? Um, I, I guess I'll go first. I, I guess um, I am DJ Beal, one half of the Instant Classic Wrestling Podcast. I guess um, I think last time we did this was like a year ago. It was uh, Sharia and I, and I am the worst at introducing people, so I didn't. I just didn't. I just went right into the show. Um, so, you know, I, I appreciate, you know, the respect you have for me, and, you know, it's not that I don't have respect for you. I just forgot. I just I just forgot, and it, it wasn't my fault. Okay. Casey, let everyone know who you are. I'm Casey. I'm the other half of the Instant Class Crossing Podcast. And I also remember that review a year ago that I was not invited to, DJ. No, you weren't invited to it because you were out of town. That was the reason we did it, because you were out of town. Okay, I was, true. like, filling in for you. I was like, yeah. Casey 2.0. He was a really good, you know, she, she was good. I'm glad you didn't pick Justin that day. I'm just saying. <laughs> Yeah. Okay, so let's just get into the review now. Um, but I want to let everyone know that I'm going to be on Andre. Um, Andre. I'm going to be on Andre Corbeil's show this week, and I will be discussing um what I want to see from this year's Slam anniversary. So do go and check that out. It will be up um this Friday on Vince Russo's channel. So yeah. Anyways, <laughs> let's get into the review. So. We see Dixie backstage talking to someone, and we can't really see who it is, but we kind of know who it is. So, guys, do you have any guesses who it might be? Like, because this was so mysterious and like <laughs> totally didn't know who it was, you know? It was it was weird. Um, I didn't know who it was. Um, for some reason, I was just really shocked. Um, <laughs> when 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 said guy. Um, don't want to ruin the surprise. Said guy came out there. I, I actually was kind of surprised because I, I thought it was going to be somebody like like new or something for some reason. I don't know because they've signed so many people, and I know they've signed so many people, so I thought this was going to be the kind of throw them out there for us. But, you know, I mean, I wasn't disappointed. I was confused at first, but I wasn't disappointed. <laughs> I, yeah. Casey, any thoughts on this mysterious thing? It's like, yeah. I'm going to ruin it. I'm going to let you know it was the blue meanie. It was the blue meanie. It, w it wasn't the blue meanie. I, all right. I thought it was the blue meanie. It looked like him from behind. I was pretty sure it was him. It wasn't? All right. Um, yeah, I, I, I kind of agree with DJ. I, I wanted it to be somebody new because I know they've signed so many new um, you know, indie guys. Uh, so I was a little bit upset, but it wasn't a huge letdown. Yeah, so then we see some footage from last week, and then, and then the miracle, you know, yeah. grace us with their presence and come in. Um, and apparently Mike Bennett gave Dixie his MySpace and his AOL Messenger. I mean, yeah, Mike Bennett, that's like really 2006 and it's 2016, unless you're Bram and then you think it's 2006, but that's a whole other story. <laughs> um, but Mike Bennett calls out whoever is in charge, and that is Ethan Carter the third in a suit. Yeah, anything on that? <laughs> um, yeah, I, I love the 2006 reference, you know. He was talking to Bram backstage, you know, they, they talked a little bit, and, you know, they just discussed, you know, how they was feeling. It was his year, um, 2006, but uh, with, with this one, I, I definitely I like this whole uh, back and forth thing that they kind of had back and forth banter. It's always you know fun to see Mike Bennett and uh, EC3 go at it. And you know, I actually I was thinking about this. I like that we, we talk about this all the time with WWE and Natalia and any family ever um, that they have. They haven't mentioned that, and technically not family, but storyline wise, they haven't mentioned that EC3 is Dixie's nephew in a long time. Um, and even this, it was a small reminder that he is, but they didn't. They still didn't say it, and I, and I like that for some reason. I, I just really like that they do that. But um, yeah, I, I thought this was a good way of getting of building this feud a little bit in, a, in an awkward and different way. But also, it um, it let EC3 continue to kind of build on his face, you know, him being a being a face and being a 
the troll that he is. My goodness, he is so good at being a troll. But uh, I, I love I, I love EC3, man. That he's 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 still my champ, darn it. He is still my champ. Who? No. I love him. I don't. <laughs> I'm a big fan. He's horrible. He's bad. He's real bad. He's trash. Uh, yeah. To, to, but uh, you know, I, I get it. You know, see, they they tell all the all their wrestlers to make you know mention of 2006 because that was when TNA was really good, and they miss those days. <laughs> they really want to go back to like 2005, 2006. Um, but yeah, I I like um EC3 and Mike Bennett. I I think you know they. On the mic, they work well off of each other. Um, you know, they, they're both really good on the mic. Um, I, I'm definitely getting getting excited for this build up with their feud. Um, and yeah, it's it's surprising that they haven't you know mentioned that EC3 is um, in storyline uh, Dixie's you know nephew. But then again, I, I feel like Dixie hasn't been a huge Part of the storyline, really, um, in a while. Well, 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 Bret Hart's never a huge part, but they just throw him in there. Cause, you know. Bret Hart's always a huge. He's always is. They will repeat the Montreal screw job as many times as they can. It's going to be like 2045, and they're going to still be doing the Montreal screw job. <laughs> um, shout out to the full people that are watching. Thank you. You rock, yeah. <laughs> oh, five. Okay, I see you. Um, um, but um, Mike Bennett is gonna clean toilets for us this week. You know, he's gonna clean toilets. I, I, I no, I was not a big fan of this. Um, I mean, this is the miracle. Like, he shouldn't be cleaning toilets. Um, but Maria is going to have a job evaluation too. <sighs> but you know, I no like. I felt like the miracle they just they just gave up so easily like okay you're going to okay. give me the toilets to clean I'll clean them for you like no you need to like throw a tantrum like why are you just no uh, I don't know how you felt about that but I was just no not having it Yeah he did he did kind of not fight it um it felt like but I I don't know it was weird like <laughs> EC3 was in charge and like everything he was doing Mike Bennett was like okay you know, um, you know, it, you know, I'm mad. You know, inside, in here, I'm mad. But you know, I'm gonna, you know, I'm gonna stay calm. Maybe, maybe that's what it is. He, it's the calm before the storm. You know, it's the calm before the storm. And you know, when you talk about Mike, Mike Minute, you gotta put the hands up and do this the whole time. So I am for the rest yeah. of the time. <laughs> right there. Mm. I, you know, what was weird to me was not only did he not put up a fight about it. But that like led went led to a commercial, and then we come back from the commercial. He's already done cleaning all five stalls. Either that man cleans toilets really fast, or he didn't do his job, and EC3 didn't check. I don't think EC3 checked. Yeah, but I like the way how everybody was like singing, like yes, the crowd, you were alive this time. I really like that. Um. He got, Mike kind of kicked the um, cleaning stuff like a girl. Well, I'm not going to say like a girl because, I mean, I can kick better than that. But, yeah. Um, and then we had Lashley who comes out. Um, he comes out to stick his nose um, into EC3's business. But um, Drew comes out and he's going to hand pick who Lashley is going to fight tonight. Um, and then we saw EC3 and Mike Bennett in the toilet. Why? Um, like, come on, this is a miracle, the Mike Bennett. Um, but yeah, so Drew uh, picks Bram to fight Lashley, and I really enjoyed this match. Um, I think they were very aggressive um, at the start, so I really liked it. It felt a bit personal to me. I don't know, but um, I liked the um, running knee kick um, that Bram did um, and the spinning heel kick that he did. That was quite good. Um, but Lashley gets disqualified for using the chair. Then Drew comes out, Lash Lashley runs, why? Like, this is Lashley, like, he's a destroyer, why is he running? Like, no, like, why? Uh, thoughts? Um, with, with, with this, I I definitely liked it. It was a cool, you know, it was a cool, um, 
cool match to kind of start off the show with the first match. Um, cause, cause Bram, I think it was cool because Bram having the King of the Mountain title, um, him facing off against a guy who's facing off for the world title could bring a lot of importance to that title. Um, I, I do. I, I've been listening. I was listening to a guy. Uh, I don't remember his name off the top of my head anymore, but I was listening to a guy talk about how the King of the Mountain title should be changed to something different, and I, I definitely agree um, with that. Because it just it just is weird being the King of the Mountain title and not being defeated in a King of the Mountain match all the time. Um, but I, I definitely you know I, I like this um, I, I like this match. I thought it was it was it was nice. It had the nice physical feel to it. Both of them are really physical. I don't know why Lashley ran. You know he's but he, but Lashley's a smart man too. You know he's a smart man. He gets it. You know he gets it. He's got to he's got to save his spear for the end of the night. He's got to save his spear for for uh, you know June twelfth. He's got to save. It. Yeah, um, this was a good match. I'm not. Uh, it's on record that I'm not a Lashley fan. Uh, he's he's trash. He's real bad. Uh, just because DJ likes him so much, so he's he's trash. He's real bad. But I like this match. Um, they were very physical. Um, I feel like we haven't seen a lot of Bram in a while. So uh, it was good to see him, even though he's the was the king of Mount, the mountain champion. It still feels like we haven't really seen him much um, since he won the title. Um, so that was good. Um, you know, just good build up. Um, unfortunately, you know, he does end up losing the title. Um, but yeah, I, I definitely, I kind of agree. They need to change that title or do something with it. I mean, they're going to keep the same title. I mean, belt. He, the, just... the guy I was listening to, he actually, yeah, I agree. They're going to keep the same title. That belt. But the guy I was listening to, he made a good point. TNA has a lot of, like, hardcore matches with blood, and that's kind of what people want to see. And he mentioned changing it to a hardcore title. Um, and I thought that was actually a pretty, pretty good idea because it's something different, something that, um, you know, people would complain about because, you know, God forbid they do something um, and, and change the title. But um, I think it would be pretty cool if they if they made a hardcore title or something. You know, keep keep the – like, I, I mean, if they're going to keep the title, like, I, I hope they don't take it off TV and then bring it back. Like, I, I would rather them – if they're going to say this title is the hardcore title because they never do close-ups of this title, so we never know. Um, <laughs> if they're going to say this title is a hardcore title, just have someone be, like, ordained as a hardcore title. Or something like if they're gonna keep this title the same and never change. It. The one thing that I I was really hopeful for the King of the Mountain title, not only because I like the the match, the King of the Mountain match, but in the beginning when they made it the King of the Mountain title, the one thing that they said was this is an interpromotional title. Not one time have we seen it defended on any other promotion or even seen except for like. Uh, if you know Brent or uh, if EY or somebody you know did an indie show because you know TNA guys still do indie shows and stuff, which is kind of cool. But I've never seen it defended on any other promotion except when I, I think that was a that was a Jeff Jarrett idea, and then when Jeff Jarrett left, like. Yeah. They're just like, eh, yeah. <laughs> you know, like, like, eh, we can't really do that anymore, you know, like, like, cause I think you say things and you mean it when you say it, but then you just never get to it. It's like I'm gonna go clean my room, and then I'm like, eh, you know, let me just play Xbox. Um, no, good points. Um, but then Eli Drake comes out and he cashes his briefcase. And wrestles Bram for a minute or two. And guess what? Becomes our new King of the Mountain champion. Again, no reaction from the crowd. Like, at least boo the guy or something. Um, but I wasn't really expecting him to become um, the new champion. But he is. Thoughts on that? See, see, the issue is they don't know how to respond. Because you're not supposed to like Eli Drake. But... He's so likable. He's so funny. He's hilarious. Um, like hearing him talk, just to talk. Like I'm gonna get me like an Eli Drake um, alarm or something, just to hear him talk in the morning. I I love it. I love hearing that man talk. Um, but yeah, when, when <laughs> it was funny, I was I, I saw Bram coming down the ramp and whatnot. I was like, 
Bram really looks good with that title. And then, like, uh, ten minutes later, Eli Drake comes out, and I'm like, oh, no. Why did I, did I have to say that right then? Right then? Um, and then as, as soon as I said it, like, gone. It, it, it's gone. So um, it's it's nice to see Eli Drake with a, a, a single title now. You know, something, you know, because it's, it's his first one in TNA, and he's impressive to me. I, I like him a lot. Um, I'm hoping they can they can do some some good things with him. And I don't know if they're going to keep the fact of life thing, because dummy, yeah. Uh, but, you know, I... I, I I'm definitely liking Eli Drake as a champion. I, I want to see what he's going to do with his first run. See, the funny thing is, the funny thing is I, thought I thought the exact, the exact same exact thing when he walked game. out. I was yeah, like, he looks good with that title. <laughs> um, but I, I like, I kind of like that you know Eli Drake won the title. Um, now it'll depend on if they actually do anything with the title or, you know, try to build it up because, I mean, since Bram has had it, they've done nothing with it. Even when EY had it, they did nothing with it. It was just, you know, a belt to, you know, have them wear. They didn't, it was barely defended. Um, And when it was, like you were saying before, DJ, it wasn't defended half the time in a King of the Mountain match. Like, that's like having a hardcore title not defended in a hardcore match or a tag team title defended in a singles match. No. Well, you Same thing, right? You can't do that. Um, but, yeah, I, I'm, I'm excited. You know, he definitely deserves to have a title. Um, he's very likable for a heel, but, I mean, these days most heels are likable and most faces are hated. It's just how our generation has kind of become, I guess. I think since sort of since like the Attitude Era in WWE, um, when Austin came, became that huge heel, but everyone loved him. Um, but I, like I said, I hope they actually do something with this. They don't just kind of, oh, here, have this title. You're not going to do anything with it, but you can wear it. Um, he will be defending the title at some battery, though. That was just announced today, I think, yeah. Against Bram, preferably? Yep, against Bram, so they're obviously not going to use the whole format of, you know, the typical King of the Mountain match. But, yeah. Um, so then we see the bromance, sunbathing, you know, catching a tan. But why the hell is Robbie wearing, like, a woolly hat? Like, has he got the seasons wrong? Like, why? Um, and then their guru, Raquel, is going to teach them how to focus, and she obviously teaches them, you know, how to focus by just strutting, and yeah, any thoughts on that? Um, but because she's hot, I guess. <laughs> I guess that, that's, that's the whole, that's the whole focus thing um, they're, they're going with, but uh, I, 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 uh, I like, uh, I like this because it's a new way of introducing, or a different way, not necessarily new, um, a different way of introducing um, new talent. So I'm fine with it. Um, I don't know how long it's gonna last with the whole the whole guru thing. I don't even know if it's gonna work out. Um, like I don't know if they're gonna win the titles come Slammiversary or not. The Decay haven't had them for as long as I want them to have them, like forever. I want them to have them forever um, until until I get mad at them. Um, but I, I mean, I, I'm liking the Bromans. I'm just wondering if they're ever gonna do you know if they're ever gonna do anything. Um, you know, with are they gonna do something with the Bromans? Um, are they going to be darker? Like they said they were going, because I know they was tanning. I saw them. I saw them tanning. I did. I saw it right before my eyes. But are they going to be darker? You know, the darker? I'm waiting for that darker side. I think Casey is too. We're all waiting. You know, we want to see dark bromans. We need black bromans. We need it. That's racist. It's not. We, I think black bromans. Who, 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 who can be black bromans? The, the primetime players. Bring them in. Black bromans. I mean, it's possible. I just. I'm upset with this entire thing. First of all, they teased the this darker bromance, and we haven't seen anything that you know nothing darker about them. Um, you know, I hate Raquel. I hated her in Tough Enough. Um, I don't understand how they're building her as a guru. We don't know if she can wrestle. We've literally never seen her actually wrestle. We didn't see her wrestle. They did one night only. Um, knockouts, knockdown. Was she good though? Like I don't think. I you, you should watch it and find out. <laughs> I mean, oh, 
Oh, she just dangled the bait out there, and they ain't got to see if you want it or not. So, I mean, you know, may, maybe. We'll see. But still, like, I just I don't know what they're doing with them. I, I, are they actually going to push them, or are they just going to give up on this, you know, in a couple weeks? Um, it's kind of it, – because TNA does that, you know. WWE does it as well. But, you know, sometimes with, with gimmicks like this or, you know, storylines like this, you can't – Really, you feel like you can't really, you know, get into it because you don't know if they're actually going to go where, anywhere with it. Um, if they're just going to do the regular bromance, I mean, it's cool because the fans love the bromance, but, well, I want to see something different. I want to see a change. No, I agree. Like, they're kind of just boring me. I don't know. They, they just don't appeal to me. I don't know. Maybe because I just don't have a sense of humor, but that is that. But um, we see EC3 and Mike again in the toilet, um, and Earl Hefner um, comes out and calls Mike an asshole. Yep. Um, and Mike is going to um, ref a match tonight. And then we see a few shots um, of the Hardy State. Yeah, and then we see Eli Drake backstage pouring some champagne or throwing it um, and being, you know, just Eli Drake. Um, I really like that, you know, shows his personality, you know. Just a great guy. Just such a great guy, you know. There's people starving out there in the world, but he's just, you know, just throwing champagne at people. Any thoughts on that? Um, <laughs> I, I I like the whole uh, Earl Earl Hebner thing. I thought it had at first. I I didn't get it because I just I don't know why I just forgot the whole Earl Hebner Mike Bennett thing from a couple weeks ago. But like, it's good consistency. Um, you know, it, it shows a little consistency, which is what we've strived for with TNA. Um, and I definitely liked it. I thought it was it was funny. Um, you know, it's kind of what the the main gist of it was supposed to be. It's supposed to build a feud, but in a kind of a humorous way. Um, <laughs> Eli Drake, pop, you know, popping a few drinks. You know, popping a few drinks. You know, you know. I guess that, that that's how you celebrate. You know, e Eli knows. You know, he, he know how to celebrate. That's all that's all that is. Um, you know, he, he spilt most of it and that's expensive stuff, so so I'm gonna need him to calm down just a little bit on the spilling. You know. <laughs> it was funny, he was just pouring that out and putting it in people's hands just so he could slap it away. And I'm like, Eli, you just not it's not cool, man. It's not cool. <laughs> but uh I, I definitely thought this was you know, it it was it was a cool little funny segment and then uh the the Matt Hardy, Jeff Hardy estate thing, um I just going overall in the whole segment. I liked. I, we'll, I know we're gonna get to it later, but I liked. I liked it overall more than a lot of people have. Um, you know, in my personal opinion, but you know, we'll get to it when we get to it. Yeah. Um, the the Earl Hebner thing was kind of funny. Um, you know, it, it's always good to you know see Earl in any you know storyline. Um, just because, you know, you got to love Earl. Why not? Um, unless you're a Bret Hart fan, then you, you probably don't love Earl. But it wasn't Earl's fault. It was Vince. Don't blame it on Earl. But, um, yeah, I. And, and then, you know, all the champagne, he'd be drinking it, and then it goes everywhere. But, again, I, I like this. Any Eli Drake segment is, is funny and entertaining, so, I mean, he can waste it if he wants to. If he bought it, he can waste it, you know? I mean, th you're complaining about it. What, he wasted one bottle. Have you seen how much beer Austin has wasted in the past, like, 20 years? That man has gone through, like, a thousand million Billion, I don't know. I can't do math and estimate, but it's been a lot more than just one bottle of ship. I'm just saying. I'm just saying. Okay. So then we see a tag team match between little old little cute Spud and the big man Tyrus against the Bromans, and of course with Raquel. Um, I don't really have any thoughts on this match because I just didn't. I don't. I mean, it was entertaining. Um, just not very appealing to me over here. Um, but yeah, do you have any thoughts on that? I just thought Raquel was very awkward. I don't think she, no, like, yeah. Yeah, <laughs> yeah you just you just kind of knew, you know, who was gonna win this match. I think was the thing. Um, they got you uninterested in it uh, because you know Tyrus and <laughs> I guess you could technically even say that Tyrus and Spud are kind of broken. At least Spud is um, when it comes down to it, because they're you know they're kind of just lost in the shuffle now. 
um, because they got ripped away from the Hardy brand. So you know that you know Spud is definitely broken. He's he's upset. I, I see it in his face. You know it's it's sad. It's sad. You know he he just needs a chance. Spud just needs he just needs somebody to love him. And I get it, Spud. I get it. Um, but I I like um Spud and Tyrus as a team. I, I'm I still like Hill Spud, but I hope they take the coward thing thing off. Um, you know I, I just in my opinion, um, <laughs> Raquel, um. See, see, the, the issue is the skirt was too short to be doing the little whatever she was doing anyway. The booty then, drop. Yeah, the, the 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 twerk or whatever they was doing out there. I don't know. Uh, you know, I ain't hit with the kids, I guess. You know, but I I just don't I don't uh, you know I was I was a little confused. You know, and you know I hate it for the women that watch mm-hmm. the show because you know. Um, as much as we're trying to get into like women's wrestling and non-sexism, there's always the, these little things that happen. That's like that, that just makes you think how to, how do the, the the females who are watching feel about it? Um, but I, I you know it's it's something different. Um, I love that Jesse Gods is still using the Adonis Crab. Love it a lot. Um, God, I, I don't know. I don't know what it is about Jesse, man. But I, I love that man. You know, sometimes I just flex. I ain't gonna flex right now because I ain't got no muscles. But right now, I wait. I wait by wait, month. Wait, you know? I see you working out in the gym, though. Th- that was one day. Um, that was one okay. day. You know? <laughs> <laughs> that, that was one day, and I did shoulders. So you know, I couldn't anyway. Uh, but uh, I, you know, I'm liking Jesse. You know, I'm liking. The, I'm liking the bromance. But I'm just wondering what's going to happen. And I like this No More Contenders match. <laughs> I thought it was funny. I love trolling people on the internet who are like, what have the bromans done? Uh, it was actually Justin. That's, that's how funny it was. It was Justin. He was like, what have the bromans done to be No More Contenders for the, for the tag team title? And I was like, they want a No More Contenders match. That's how that works. And, and then <laughs> he, he just was like silent for a second. And I was like, I was like ha, got him. Um, but anyway, I I I I'm I'm wondering. I think it's gonna be a good match. I'm wondering how it's gonna go. But we need more decay. Um, we saw him later, but we need more decay. Um, I do in my personal life. I I I I need them in in my personal space here. You know, um, cause Abyss he out there being beautiful somewhere, and I need to see. It. You know, he out there being pretty, and I need to see it. I'm just saying. Come on, more decay. Yeah, I. I just wasn't really into this match. Um, I don't like Spud and Tyrus as a team. I think they're just it. It doesn't mesh well with me. Like, I, but then again, I, I want Spud and Mandrews back because we got them like one time and it was amazing. And then TNA was like, "This is good. Let's not do this because why would we do things that are good?" Um, but yeah, it's it's kind of weird because they're I feel like they are in this sort of limbo where they're not with the Hardy brand anymore. So you know what are they doing? Um, I think they both either need different tag team partners or to go off on singles runs. Um, I think both of them could benefit either way. Um, and uh, the bromance again with freaking Raquel. I hate her. I'm just gonna say it. I do not like Raquel. I. I don't hate her as much as I hate Dana Brooke, but it's close. It is up there with the hatred. Just it's a strong word. Like, do you want to use that word? It's a very strong word. Spread the love. Okay, I severely dislike her. Is that better? Is that? That's a little bit hey, hey, I said the same thing to Michael Tarver, so it's fine. Michael Tarver is amazing. He is. He is just fabulous. He is he is a man's man. And I'm totally not trying to suck up, so he comes on the show. <laughs> but yeah, the you see my Do you want to take it from her, DJ? Yes, I I, I can I can do that. Maria um, backstage on her phone. Yeah, Maria. You know, she was she was she was backstage, and uh, I think she was approached by uh, EC3. And um, he he basically called her to the ring, and you know they're gonna do a little job eval, you know, which is fine, you know, it's got it's gotta happen. Maria, she's the leader, the undisputed leader 
of the knockouts division. Um, that's exactly how she sounds. But uh, she she's the leader, and you know she needs a job evaluation, and I get it. Sometimes you do. And uh, basically, they went to the ring, and Gail Kim came out and proposed a match at Slammiversary, and I, and I'm pretty sure uh, EC3, you know, he he accepted that. And then um, then we got Gail Kim and Jade versus Allie and Sienna. Um, Allie being Cherry Bomb, which I was excited about, really excited about. Um, but before we get into that, any thoughts on the job evaluation? I don't was she was she fired? I can't remember off the top of my head was she fired. No, he wasn't fired. Even though he said spoiler alert, she's gonna get fired at the start. But no, why? Um, well, I kind of like it when Maria and Gail get into like you know into each other's faces, and then yeah, but yeah, it's okay. Um, yeah, you know, I, I'm getting more excited for eventually Maria and Gail. Um, you know, I, I'm hoping it'll be a, a good match. Um, as for the tag team match, it was good to see Allie, uh, Cherry Bomb, because, you know, I've wanted to see her, you know, in TNA wrestle for a while. Um, I, I've seen some of her stuff in the indies and stuff, um, Sienna is still just not impressing me. I, I don't think she works well as a heel. I can't, like, uh, like I was saying to DJ, I think it was last week on our TNA review, she just doesn't, like, she doesn't give me, me that heel vibe for, like, I, I get it, she's bigger, she's stronger, whatever, but she still just doesn't, I don't feel like she's a heel. She's not, like, you know, Awesome Kong or Havoc, to where, you know, yeah, they're definitely heels, like, you know, they're just dominant. Um, she's dominant, but she just, I, she's too, she seems too nice. I would let her babysit my kids if I had kids. Like, I, Wait, I mean, you got kids? I mean, I don't think I got kids, I, as far as I know. You don't think? I don't think, maybe. I don't know. It's a possibility. I am a beautiful man. <laughs> Alrighty. Um, next we got Gail Kim and Jade versus Ali and Sienna. Um, <laughs> Ali got knocked out by the strikes of Sienna. The 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 whole miscommunication thing. Uh, eat the feet to Sienna. Then uh, the package pile driver on Ali. Poor Ali. They they sent that girl so many upskirts tonight. Poor Ali. You can't have that girl out there in that weird skirt, short thing she was wearing. And have her being package power driven. That that's not how that works. No. Um, <laughs> but uh, I, I thought this match was pretty good. It was okay. It wasn't. It it, it was it just kind of built on what it was supposed to build on. Is Jade gonna get the fight at the pay per view though? Cause I want to see a knockouts title match. Cause I was excited about Jade and then she left me. You know, she left she left left my eyes and I was like, where'd you go? Um, but it was it was nice to see Jade again, um, and Jade and you know new music and new attire and everything, new hair, everything. Um, definitely liking it. Uh, I saw a, a complaint about Allie and how you know oh she's a good wrestler she should actually you know uh, how in this match they didn't show much from her but she is going with that secretary um, you know character from Maria um, so she wasn't really supposed to show everything in this match so I'm I'm wondering what they're gonna how that's gonna play out too because I'm I'm excited about her. Um, as well, but um, Gail Kim and Jade get the win. Um, I'm just hoping they set up something for Jade for the for the pay per view. I want I want to see her, you know, get a get a chance to defend that knockouts championship. But uh, Sharia, any any thoughts? Well, she's a champion. We haven't like like why hasn't she been like defending her like belt? Like we haven't really seen much of her. So that's a problem right there. Um, but I enjoyed Gail and Jay together, not so much Sienna and Ali. Ali was, like, just screaming, like, girl, like, just chill out. But it was okay. Um, I just want to see more of Jade and Gail, really. Um, but yeah. Yeah, I, I think we need to see more of Jade, uh, in general. I mean, and Gail, um, just because it's... It's it's almost like she's secondary to these other feuds, and she shouldn't be. She's the knockout champion. Um, I mean, it, half the time, if you ask me who the knockout champion any, is anymore, I have to think for a second. Just because we don't 
we don't see her on TV as much. We don't see her with the belt. And, you know, being a champion, you should be out there. You should be, you know, not, you know, thrown down, shoved down our throat, but, you know, we should see you regularly. Uh, and I feel like we don't see her. And it's not even like, it's not even like a Brock Lesnar thing where she's an attraction. I mean, she's good, but she's to the point where we have to keep seeing her to keep interested. Um, I just hope that they do build something up for the match because they'll put on a good match. It's just we need a build up for it. Um, you can't just throw it on the, the, the card last minute and expect us to care. Alrighty. Um, next, we went back to the the Hardys, um, kind of kind of a state. Uh, Jeff Hardy had just arrived. Rebby Sky was leaving. He, she says, you know, basically Matt Hardy, he's out of his mind. I can't, you know, I can't deal with it. I gotta go. With with little little Matt, little Matt. And I love that baby. I love that baby. Uh, he's so adorable. But uh, you know, she she uh she taking him with him because she gotta protect the she gotta protect the kids. It's for the kids, man. Uh, she gotta protect the kids. And uh, uh, he walks in on Matt Hardy playing piano. <laughs> Matt Hardy, you need to stop. You you need to either learn how to play piano. Or anyway, um, but um, she, Jeff Hardy walks in from Hardy someone who's really rubbish at playing the piano. He was good. Okay, okay. See, I can't play it. I, I just, I he just was trying. At least he was trying. Don't put him down, DJ. How dare you? I mean, he just—he's a broken man. I—I I understand. I get it. You know, he's a broken man. I get it. But uh, <laughs> but Jeff Hardy comes in and um. Matt Hardy notices he's behind him, and he turns around and he says, "You know, you know, Jeff Hardy. He he's like straightforward with it. He's like, you know, this must, you know, this must end. Like, we gotta get this contract signed. That was the main gist of this." And um, Matt Hardy says, "It it must end where it all began." And Matt Hardy kind of just walks away, um, and they they're heading to some sort of place, which you'll see in a a later um, part of the the show. Um, any thoughts on the Matt Hardy intervention to this point? Um, I mean, it was interesting, but it just it had such a like unrealistic vibe to it that I just couldn't take it seriously. Like, I mean, yeah. Yeah, I I'm getting a little bit more into this storyline with Matt and Jeff. Um, I know in the beginning I was saying, you know, they're just copying this from WWE because WWE did a Matt versus Jeff kind of feud and storyline. And in the beginning it felt like they were just doing that. But I like, like I said last week, that they, they're doing a change in Matt's character um, because other than, like, the version one, um, we've really only seen just the one, the Matt Hardy. Uh, we haven't seen him do much of a change. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Iconic. I get it. But, um... No, Casey, it's Iconic! Where, on, Casey. Where Jeff, we've seen, you know, Jeff has changed a lot, um, whether it's his hair color or, you know, doing the Willow character, which TNA actually allowed him to do, which was cool. Um, but, like I said, it's, it's cool to see Matt getting a different character and seeing something, you know, seeing that he can do different things. It's not just the same Matt Hardy, whether it's iconic or not. <laughs> don't get choked trying to do that. It's rough. You know, it, it gets rough sometimes. I don't see how he did it so many times. I don't get it. But <laughs> but next we got Mike Bennett. He's in the ring. You know, he's basically comes out. He complains about, you know, you know he is the miracle. Basically what Sharia has already said. You know, he is the miracle. He doesn't deserve to be put through this. He is a wrestler, and he wants to wrestle. Um, and then uh, EC3 comes out. He says, you want to wrestle? Well, I'm going to put you in a match with... Um, I can't remember how he said it exactly, but he was like, you know, someone who, you know, loves to drink or someone who probably isn't sober. Something like that. Um, I can't remember exactly what he said, but... It was Jane Storm on the Boozer Cruiser, you know. Shout out to the Boozer Cruiser. He still going. It's still going, baby. You know, it it, it never stops. Um, and then we got Jane Storm versus Mike Bennett. Um, Maria ends up distracting uh, Jane Storm, and Bennett ends up winning, winning with the roll up. Um, 
then we'd get EC3. Um, <laughs> I, I I like the kind of the wordplay with EC3. You know how you know Bennett he, he calls you know or uh, at least Maria does calls this his place of worship and Mike Bennett's the miracle. EC3 says he plans to burn Mike Bennett's church down and he leaves him with a um, last call super kick uh, or he said a kick to the face um, by James Storm. Um, any thoughts on the whole minute EC3 situation still building James Storm versus Mike Bennett? Um, the match was uh, uh, oh okay it was, it was good okay um, I just wish that um, Maria would have got involved a bit more like she got the beer bottle, so why not just smash the bottle on James Storm's head? Like, you should be, like, really angry right now. Um, but, no, she just goes in with a slap. Um, but, yeah, I just I just want the Miracle to be a bit more pissed off. Like, you know, get into character a bit more, but why is it really? Yeah, I mean, it, it's just, it doesn't feel like he's fighting it enough. Um, I mean... It was good to see James Storm. Uh, James Storm is one of those guys that uh, I'm not really sure what they're doing with him now. Um, they, for some reason, they brought back Beer Money, and then you know, Bobby Roode left TNA like a month later, um, and we still haven't seen him much in WWE. Apparently, he signed with NXT. We haven't really seen anything, um, but I, I, I want to see them do something with James Storm, too, because he can do a lot of different things as well. Um, but, yeah, this match was it was okay. Um, there wasn't anything too special about it. It was just, again, building up more of the uh, Mike Bennett EC3, um, which is always good. All righty. I think, okay, I got one more thing. Um uh, we got a nice little vignette on the new uh, tag team, the Tribunal. Um, I wish I would have wrote the wrote the, wrote the names down. Now it's Baron Dax and something else. Um, yeah, I can't remember. Something else. It's yeah, one like, long name, I think. Yeah, like, like I could not. Like it was it was hard for me to remember these names. They got some crazy names, and it's gonna take me a minute. Um, but Al Snow cuts a cuts a promo, you know, about how he's trying to save wrestling and all this stuff. And, uh, you know, I've heard a lot of people get kind of upset because TNA is using these older talents in their kind of kind of main storylines. And um, if it's used to introduce a new new talent, I'm fine with it because that's, you know, kind of kind of a different different way of introducing them instead of bringing them in, having them job out, having them uh, do jobber matches and then giving them a title run. At least they're giving us something. Um, he brings out the tri the tribunal um, or tribunal. They, they, they pronounced it like five different times. Um, in five different ways, and uh, the I, I I like how the tribunal talk. Um, I think you know I, I think they should just talk in phrases. Um, let Al Snow do if they they're doing a little like tri trio type thing. Let Al Snow do most of the talking work, and then let them throw in their little French jabs here and there because that's enough to get heat on its own. Um, you know. Cause, cause I feel like anybody who's foreign um, in America is probably gonna get heat, cause they bring them in and they're like, they're foreign intruders practically. So I, I feel like um, it, it actually works out pretty, pretty well. Um, I'm, I'm liking them so far. Um, I'm, I'm hoping they, I'm looking like they're gonna get some, some good chances. Um, to me, um, <laughs> Grado and Shara come out. Um, they, they kind of talk about Grado, and then you know Al Snow, he mentioned the mama, and you don't do that. You don't, you don't talk about Grado's mama. You don't do it. You know, Grado was a happy go lucky guy, but you don't talk about his mama. Don't do it. Uh, and then we get a fight between uh, <laughs> Great Era, is what I called him tonight, um, and the uh, Tribunal. And then uh, Al Snow gets in a shot with the chair, and then the Tribunal stands tall. Um, I'm hoping they even make this a match the Tribunal versus Grado and Shara. Mm -hmm. um, I think that would be a, a pretty cool match for Slammiversary. Because um, I, I want to see more of Grado, man. I, I think he's still the ICW champion right now, if I'm not mistaken. Um, I wish they let him wear that freaking belt on TNA. Um, it, like, I, I, I want to see more like indie belts on TNA since TNA has a little more freedom with what they let you do and wear and stuff. Um, I, wa I want to see him wear that because I, I, I think it's cool that he's a world champion somewhere else. So I think that would like allow people to take him a little more seriously even in a goofy gimmick because um, cause this gimmick is himself. Like that's, uh, that's just who he is from what I've seen of him, and I, I like it a lot. Um, 
But uh, any any thoughts on you know the tribunal Al Snow Great Era Great Great Era? I, I think it's a good name. I, I'm going with it. I'm running with it, and you know, I'm I'm doing it. Sharia, any thoughts? Did she leave us? Is she frozen? Did she leave us? She might be frozen. I think. I think. Um, well, let's let's go to Casey first, and then maybe she'll she'll come back. Hopefully, the freeze is real. <laughs> um, I, I definitely am excited for the tribunal. Um, you know, we got uh, Sylvester Lafour and Marcus Louis. Uh, you know, Marcus he grown that hair back. It's slowly coming back. You know, uh, he he got out of WWE, and it's it's starting to grow back a little bit. Um, I, I like that they're you know kind of in a faction sort of with uh, Al Snow. I think that'll definitely help them get pushed in TNA or I mean in, in yeah, in TNA. Um, cause in NXT, I mean, they were a tag team, but we didn't really see much of them in, you know, the sort of grand scheme of things, I guess. Um, so I, I kind of want to see more of them and hopefully this w works out. Um, it would definitely be cool to see, um, Shara and, uh, Grado, or if you want to do Grado and Odarg versus the Tribunal, that would be a good. I think that would be a better match. I, and actually, I think we have a trio there too. We can do. I'm sure. Yeah. We could do that. Yeah. I, I all right. TNA, book it. Book it now. <laughs> uh, Sharia, if you're back, uh, any any thoughts? Are are you there? Guess we should test the waters before I just throw you out there. Is she there? I see her there, but I can't hear her there. We see your lovely picture. That's that is a that's a beautiful photo. We just don't hear the the voice along with it or movement. The voice of the voiceless. Yes, the voice of the voiceless. <laughs> um, I'm thinking. I'm thinking she's she's on her way back. Um, I haven't I haven't seen anything from her. Uh, any updates or anything? So I'll, I, I don't, I don't know if I should move on, um, or 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 what, or, or what what's to do. What it's like when you drop out and I'm stuck. Well, <laughs> well, no, well, I, I, the reason I don't know because it's not my show. <laughs> this one's not mine, so I can't just move on when I want to move on. Um, it's a little hard on me. <laughs> um, we don't know what to do. It's chat. <laughs> <laughs> Um, I don't know. Let's just. I, I guess we can. While we're waiting on her, we can talk about the show so far. Um, I think it's went went pretty well. Yeah, it has. Uh, she said she. I'm sorry for that, guys. I don't know. I think I live with a ghost, and the ghost doesn't like me speaking to other people. So yeah, but I'm back now. Um, so yeah. Um. Let's just get on to the whole Braxton and his interview. So we're introduced to Braxton, who you will also know as Pepper Parks. Um, we get to see some of his interview, um, and he talks about um, his journey in wrestling, um, which I thought was pretty cool, but I just couldn't take him seriously because of the blue or green gum in his mouth. Like, dude, why? Why you got to ruin it? Like, why? Like, this is an interview, you know, you're pouring your heart out to us. No gum, please. No. Thoughts on that? <laughs> see, see, I, I maybe I just don't pay that much attention to detail because I didn't even notice the gum. I was just excited for Pepper Pox, man. Pepper Pox. I, uh, that's exactly that was my exact um, reaction to to seeing him on my screen. I tweeted it. I was excited. I was hyped. I don't know what it is about Pepper Parks. I think I don't know if it's the name or I've seen him wrestle a couple of matches, and I, I don't know. I just really like him. Um, I'm, a, I'm a big time, big time fan uh, of Brian Sutherland, as they're they're call, or Braxton Braxton Sutherland, as they're calling him now. Um, you know, I'm kind of, kind of, kind of wondering how you know how, how his run's gonna start in TNA. Um, but once again, they're introducing a new guy in a different way, which I like. Um, you know, not everybody's coming in and you know having jobber matches and then you know having a title run. You know, and I like it. Um, I'm a fan. Pepper Potts, yeah. man. Uh, I'm I'm not gonna I'm not a super fan of Pepper Parks like uh, like DJ is, um, but I, I've seen a couple of his matches. I'm definitely excited. Um, anytime we get uh, new, you know, 
wrestlers in TNA or WWE. Um, it's always a good thing. Um, so, you know, kind of maybe maybe help build up TNA a little bit more because we all know that TNA for the past couple of years has, you know, been sort of on this sort of, I don't want to say downward spiral, but, you know, they, they need to, you know, get new guys in, um, not focus as much on their, you know, originals, because um, most of the originals are gone except for, like, Abyss. Um, and the problem is they, they bring these new guys in, and then it feels like they don't really do anything with them a lot of the time. So I'm hoping, you know, guys like Pepper Parks, um, the Tribunal, they, they actually, you know, do stuff with them, you know, maybe bring importance back to the, you know, X Division Championship maybe. I don't know. Possibly the freaking title that built your company. Sorry. Sorry. I, I got angry there for a second. Um, uh, yeah. Real quick, Sharia, I got a quick question for you. Is Grado still the ICW champion? Um, I have no idea, but I am going this year. <laughs> I'm going in... Um, well, I'm going next month, actually. So, yeah. Because I, I, I know he... Know. <laughs> I, <laughs> I, I thought you would know, but I don't really I, know. I'm wondering because before you got disconnected, I was saying that I I wish that TNA would let him wear that title, um, you know, wear, let him wear that title, like let these indie guys when they go to these shows and win these titles, let them wear those titles, kind of similar to what Ring of Honor does, because even in that goofy gimmick that's that's really him, um, I think it would still like you know bring a little more seriousness to him and you could be it'll be a little bit more believable that he's a threat to, to whoever he wrestles. Um, but that's just fine. No, I totally get what you're saying, but yeah, we'll see. Um, but yeah, um, then did we get some more footage from the Hardy estate? I don't know if we did. We did. It was like that fi the, final, the final part. It wasn't it the was final like part because the final part was after this was it? main event. Yeah. Oh, it was the yeah, close to the, the, yeah. the almost final part. Close to the. <laughs> okay, well, <laughs> yeah, um, whatever we saw there. Um, but then, you know, Lashley handpicks, you know, the Decay to fight Drew. Now, you know, it's always a good day when we see Decay, you know, just dropping a rhyme in there. Um, but I just feel like every show should just start with the Decay and end with the Decay. But um, I liked how Rosemary got involved, um, even though I wish she was, like, more, you know, involved physically. I mean, she did throw a few punches, but, um, you know, I wish she uh, used a miss, but no. Um, I enjoyed this match, um, and, you know, Rosemary also took out Janice. So what did you guys think of the match? I, um, I, I thought it was cool. Shout out to Lashley, because when I was watching this, I was like, Lashley has speared the entire roster. There ain't no way he got any friends left on this roster to pick to face Drew Galloway. And uh, then I was like, wait, how do you make friends with the Decay? How do you do this, Lashley? <laughs> but uh, I, I was excited because it was, it was kind of cool because usually when you see this whole pick your poison type of a thing, it's always singles matches. Um, and Lashley kind of used it to his advantage and made it a handicap match, which I thought was really cool. Um, it was kind of a handicap match. It, it was never really made official, but you know they kind of just you know threw themselves in there whenever they needed to, kind of being a bit more opportunistic. Um, I I honestly felt like this hurt the decay in a little bit because we haven't seen the decay in a while, and Galloway pretty much killed them. You know, killed them. Um, like, he he destroyed the decay. Um, you know, he was taking out all of them, which I I just really didn't like. I thought they should have been kind of dominant because it is three on one. Um, against Drew Galloway, and uh, you know, I, I honestly, I know Casey's gonna hate me for this, but I wanted this match to end with a spear. I did. Um, I wanted to end. I wanted it to end via disqualification, so then it doesn't make the decay look weak, and it doesn't make Drew Galloway look uh, look weak either. Like it, it kind of builds on both of them a little bit. Um, that was just my personal opinion. I, I just felt like that should have happened. I want. I wanted a spear. You know, maybe I just love the spear too much, but. Uh, yeah, I, I just felt like the decay. Um, th you know, they really, they, they really, they didn't look weak, but I, I feel like they could have looked stronger in this. You know, I wanted it to end up with end with like a roll up, and you know, have Michael Tarver come out and join the decay, because uh, I know th those are the two things that DJ would love 
because he loves roll-ups and he loves Michael Tarver. Um, but no, I, it's definitely a, a good match. Um, a, anytime we see the decay, it's always it's always good. Um, they're definitely a really unique team, uh, you know, that we haven't really seen. It, it feels like in a while we haven't really seen much of them because um, they're not on. It feels like every week we kind of see them sporadically. Um, I still miss their sort of feud that they sort of started a while back with Jimmy Havoc. I don't even know if Jimmy Havoc is still with TNA. He's injured. Oh. Yeah. Why? Why do all the good guys have to be injured? Why? Why does this happen? I was so excited for him. Um, but I, I definitely hope he comes back and they do something with that because that was really it, that was starting to be really intriguing. I was kind of, you know, they they were building up, you know, a past that Rosemary had with Jimmy Havoc, and it was kind of interesting. Um, but I I feel like even though the Decay are tag team champions, I feel like they're still kind of thrown around randomly into random like matches and situations. It's not you know. Um, which kind of works for them because they are kind of that chaotic team. Um, so, you know, it, it works, but it's still... I kind of want to see them in a set storyline, I, I feel like. Yeah, but um, when Rosemary, you know, took Janice out, Lashley came and just ruined the whole fun. Um, but Drew pins um, Crazy Steve with the um, Future Shock DDT. That is it. Um, but then we see the final... The final of this whole um, Matt and Jeff segment. Um, I just find it so cringy. It's just, I don't know, I feel like the camera shots just don't uh, do this whole segment any favors. It just comes across really unrealistic and it's just, I don't know, but uh, guys gotta work on those camera shots though. But um, yeah, Rebby comes out and apparently she's got a baby over there and you know, she throws it to Jeff, but it's not really a baby, it's, it's a doll. It's, I don't know what it is. But um, then, uh, what happens then? Does Matt throw Jeff um, on the table? Yeah. Yeah, Matt Hardy does a side effect um, on that ridiculous table. That that wooden table. Yeah. So, I mean, I I like the whole you know, Ruby throwing the baby at Jeff. I like that. But other than that, no. Thoughts on that? I'll be honest. I actually really like this. Um, now, now, I will tell you, the camera work in this, at times, was shaky. Um, I, I like the kind of the little, like, the, the really far away shots, um, of Jeff Hardy coming in and all of that. Um, but, like, like, especially once they got in there and, like, you know, everything was moving and stuff, I felt like the cameraman was like, oh, God, I don't know what to do. You know, because, um, like, there was a point where Jeff Hardy was going to the ring and he caught his, he, like, Pulled the camera down and then pulled it back up, and I was like, "What are you? What are you doing? No, that's not how that works." Uh, but uh, I, you know, I, I actually like this. I, I felt like it built on the story a little bit more um, in a unique way. Um, it, it was in the estates. Um, it was this is a personal feud, so why not take them to their own houses uh, or take them to Matt Hardy's houses? We don't really know. I think because it was vague, we don't really know if this was like a childhood home for for Matt Hardy, and he's just moved in it personally now. Or what's going on with that? Um, and it built on Matt Hardy's character that is kind of mysterious too. You know, it built on that whole thing he can play mind games, and then uh, it was kind of, of a little bit of kind of like a swerve there at the end with with Rebby throwing the baby up there, and because you know we thought Rebby was done with this. She said, you know, week after week after week, I'm done with this. I'm not dealing with this. I'm not going to do it. You know, because key the key it. Um, but. I you know I, I I actually liked this. I thought it was really good. Um, you know, it wasn't like perfect by any means, but it was very um, lucha lucha underground esque. But don't get me wrong, TNA is not lucha underground, so they you know this is not like their niche, so it's not like it's not gonna be perfect. Um, and also, Casey and I have talked about this. Um, we've talked about how contract signings have kind of been um, done in the same way. Over and over and over again, and this was this was technically a contract signing, but it was done outside of the ring, which we wanted, um, and it was, it was technically kind of in a ring outside of the ring, which we wanted, and it was you know it was it was done in a kind of a different different type of a segment, a kind of more dramatic segment. I I liked it. I thought it was good. I thought it told a story, which is what it was supposed to do. 
it just told it in a way we weren't thinking it was going to tell it in. Um, which, which you know, I, I think, I think as fans, we should be a little more appreciative of what we get rather than just criticizing everything we see. I feel like that's indirect towards me. <laughs> no, it's not. I, pro I, I promise it's not. No, I've seen a lot of ridiculous negative feedback towards this. So, so it's it's more so to them people, not necessarily you. I, like I get I get the gripes against it, but not. You know, I, I... Yeah, I I mean. I like this segment for the fact that it was sort of on location, um, not you know in the impact zone, not in you know the arena. Uh, it was somewhere else, um, and it wasn't a stupid segment, kind of like the uh, uh, Lashley Drew Galloway fight at the the gym that you know he happened to be working out there, but all of the other TNA stars happened to be there. Um, it wasn't stupid like that, um, but I, I definitely like it. Um, and kind of talking about the camera angles as well, um, I feel like we always have sort of weird camera angles or you know unprofessional camera angles in TNA, which is weird because TNA has been a company for like at least 13, 14 years. You would think you know, they, they would figure out how to do good camera angles, how to, you know, get better cameramen, I guess. Um, but, yeah, I feel like there's always these weird, like, camera angles or, you know, cameramen just happen to be, you know, random places because logic in wrestling. Um, but, yeah. That's just wrestling in general, though. Cam cameraman, that uh, convenience, the whole, like, <laughs> the whole thing with convenience and you're just conveniently standing there, that's... That's just like something I guess you just have to accept in wrestling. <laughs> yeah. But yeah, no, I definitely agree. Um, I felt like this segment definitely had a Lucha Underground vibe to it. Not that I watch Lucha Underground, but from what I have seen. Um, but yeah, so that is it with this review. Um, do you guys have any final thoughts on the show? Um, I, I, I'm definitely, you know, I, I'm, I'm excited for Slammiversary more than anything, um, you know, because when I, I think when you finally get a, a TNA pay-per-view, it's, it's kind of an exciting thing that there, there is some sort of a build to it, regardless of if it was actually built up or not, um, just because we don't get them as much. I would love to see them go to like four slash six. That would be great. Uh, I just think that's a good number instead of just two. But um, I, you know, I'm, I'm definitely. You know, excited. I thought this show was it, it was pretty good. I don't, this isn't technically the go home show though, is it? I think next week is. Yeah, ne next week is the go home show. But uh, you know, th I think this show was good. It it kind of left the door open for some different views to continue to build towards Slammiversary. Um, and you know, I'm I'm definitely excited. You know, for Slammiversary because the I think last year's we didn't have as many titles defended, so I think that's going to be nice to see. You know, getting titles defended actually on a on a Impact pay-per-view instead of the next show after because they, they, they like to do that, I guess, to appease the ratings and whatnot. But, um, you know, I'm, I'm definitely excited. I, I liked everything about it. Um, I, I just thought, I thought it was a good show. I, I, I don't think the, the matches weren't that great at, at times, but I, I, I just liked the show overall. Yeah, um, I definitely like seeing some of the newer uh, signings for TNA um, more. Um, I'm excited uh, for Slammiversary, but at the same time, I feel like I've been spoiled by TNA with all the, you know, non-pay-per-view, you know, TNA specials and stuff where it's, it's on cable, you don't have to pay for it. Now, pay-per-view comes up, I got to pay for it again. And it's not nine ninety nine. It's gonna be like thirty some dollars. Oh. Well, like, that's why you should move to the UK because we get it free here. Just saying. That's not fair. Can you send? Can you send me the like no, UK no, stream no, or something? No, no, no. Sorry. I mean, you answered that real quick. I, I mean, I, I just want you know help, a little help, you know. You like record it with your phone and not. <laughs> just, just, can you video chat with me? Wow, it's on your TV, and then we can, you know, we can figure this out. I think, I think we can work out a, a deal. Yeah, I think, I think it needs to happen because I don't want to have to pay like forty bucks for 
But no, I'm excited for it. Um, even though I, I know, you know, all the internet trolls are gonna be like, "This sucks." It seems like every <laughs> slam anniversary anymore, they're like, "This sucks. This is horrible." Blah blah blah. Like it can have like the best matches on the card, and they're always like, "This sucks. TNA's falling apart. TNA's gonna end." Blah blah blah. <laughs> Yeah, but I hate to be a buzzkill, but I didn't really enjoy the show. But <laughs> and I obviously didn't have much to say this week on this review. But um, yeah, it's been great having you guys. Um, so where can everyone find you? Um, you can find me. Uh, well, I guess you can find us more so. Um, on the Instant Classic Wrestling Podcast on YouTube or ICW underscore Podcast on Twitter. We actually use it now. I actually use it now. Casey doesn't. Um, and well, you can <laughs> I use it. <laughs> you don't. But uh, you can you can follow me at Beast Mode One Two Three One Hundred. I am there as well. Um, you know that, that we're on Spreaker too, I guess. Um, <laughs> under one of those names, if you want to find us on there too. Um, but Casey, any any more things that they need to find us on? Um, you know, I live in. Oh no. <laughs> You can find me at my mama house. Uh, no, uh, basically just the 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 uh, podcast Twitter. Um, I mean, you can follow me at KC1987, C A S E E 1987. I don't use my personal Twitter that much, so I mean, you can if you want. You can do it, but uh, you'll you'll get a hold of us better on the the podcast and go. Go follow our channel because we're awesome, and we're almost on a schedule. We're almost on a schedule. It's really cool. <laughs> well, that's great to hear. But um, so yeah. Um, if you guys have any thoughts, leave a comment down below. Um, but yeah. So next week I will have a slam anniversary prediction video, and I'm gonna have, well, hopefully I will have loads of people. And of course, you guys are invited. Would you like to accept my invitation? Like. Um, I, would, I will cordially accept your invitation. Okay. Would you like to accept Casey by invitation? You know. I'm gonna do something better than cordially, and I can't think of a word better than cordially. But I'm super cordially, and you know, I don't know. But yes, <laughs> yes. Well, that sounds good. So yeah, definitely check that out next week. Um, but yeah, we should have a few more people, hopefully. Hope, hopefully they don't like bail on me and they're not flaky. But yeah, um, it's like I said, comment down below and catch me on the Andre Corbiel show this Friday. Friday is tomorrow. Well, technically it's Friday for me right now because yeah, different time zones. <laughs> but um, yeah, catch me on Vince Russo's channel. Um, and yeah, so I'll see you next week with a review too. And see you guys later. <laughs>